Well, it's that time of the week again. It is time for Chit Chat Across the Pond with Adam Angst. And we've spent 50 minutes playing with audio problems. So that's super fun. How are you doing, Adam? <laughs> I'm doing fine. I don't know very much about audio. So so for me, it's really the, the troubleshooting is like, well, let's. what if we poke at this? What if we change that cable? What if we like restart? It never hurts to restart, does it? Yeah, I, th- I think we could, could zoom a couple of times. We switched from audio hijack to QuickTime. We did, uh, let's see, you changed microphones. We both rebooted. Uh, you're on your AirPods <laughs> Pro and they seem to be audible now. So we're going to stick with this. <laughs> We're, we're going with Audible. There you go. <laughs> and right. It was sounding like we were from from the fifties. I mean, like we had static. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was a, that wasn't good. But we are using Audio Hijack, so this is very exciting. Uh, Paul Kafasis will be happy. Well, let's see. This this <laughs> week we have a couple of subjects, but the first thing I want to do is kind of circle back on what we talked about last time, which was the annoying pop ups every month about is it? Do you still want this thing to? Uh, um, record your screen. <laughs> yeah, right. And the reason I wanted to bring it back up was was actually something that John Syracuse said on uh, the Accidental Tech Podcast. I had all the pieces of information, but I didn't put them together in a way that that gave the information that he pulled together. So since we last talked, people have been able to reverse engineer this pop up. They found the plist file that has the uh, reminder that says, "Okay, in, in a year or in a month." Go go uh, bother this person again, and uh, it it got to the point now where a guy named Jordy Bruin has uh, written an app called Amnesia that will let you fix this problem for you. <laughs> and the piece that John put together there was after saying all that, that means that the bad guy who just put the stuff on your on your computer to to cyber stalk you or whatever or control you in an abusive relationship, bad person, they can do this too. Yeah. Yeah, the, the, this whole thing is just like it's just clearly gone gone off the rails at Apple, because if they're doing it to prevent all sorts of bad behavior, it can't be this easy to work around. You know, like I mean, I, I did it by um, by simply setting the date forward. I mean, I figured that out before I saw about, saw the app and the plist stuff. I was like, oh, well, you just set the date forward a year, and then it won't won't prompt you for a year. Um, and so, uh, you know, but again, that would be super easy to do. And then, you know, it turns out it's just a text file. Um, and it's even easier to find an app that will edit the text file for you. So yeah, the whole thing has has become uh, ill thought out at best. Theater? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I guess, um, cause yeah, it is, it is security theater. Um, but I don't know. It, it, security theater. It, yeah, there's nothing good about it. <laughs> it's like, I'm like, I, I, I got nothing here. Like, this is a stupid prompt. It should just go away. <laughs> hey, Mama taught you if, you if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything nice at all, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. I was like, no, nope, it's just, it's just, just a, worse, a worthless, uh, worthless thing. Apple is done and they should stop. Okay. I, 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 my only hope is that by seeing people find the P list, People writing shell scripts to change it, people changing their dates, people writing apps in order to fix this problem. Apple's going to notice and go, OK, well, so that didn't work so good. And then it'll go away. Yeah. So when I when I covered the, you know, the sort of how to do this, um, I mean, the UI is terrible in its own right. But really from a security standpoint, because this is meant to be a security feature. But it's problematic because it's going to cause user fatigue in a big way. And, you know, the, everyone, you know, who's, you know, does this, like, like, I don't want to see this anymore. They stop overall just paying attention to security prompts. Like, yeah. they're all, yeah. you know, all, all crying wolf. They're all big mash, you know, click this to get your work done buttons. And, and then people start getting into the circumventions like what we've seen. Once you're, once people are going to major circumventions, it's game over. You're not doing anything useful. Yeah, you've 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 lost. Go back and rethink it until you can do it better. I mean, okay, I'm glad they tried to fix something that they saw was a problem, but uh, okay, bye bye. Go do something else now. <laughs> Work on that AI yeah, stuff. Yeah, so I, I I actually I got a new version of it, fifteen point one. Since then, I have to go look. I can't remember. I think I might have gotten a new fifteen point one that I should go look at and see if anything's changed. Oh, okay. Um, Not when beta. I, when I did look at fifteen. Oh, still beta, yeah, beta, yeah. Beta, okay. Um, but 
but they keep releasing betas. Let's see. Did, 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 did I say what? What they changed? Um, beta. F- okay, yeah, I think there's. I was using beta four before, so I have to see if I'm on beta five now. I can't remember. But um, it, the the uh, my hope was because beta four was still showing actually a different interface. It still had the continue to allow continue to allow button, not the you know um, not the oh. uh, you know prompt you know pause for a month. Oh, it does have that. Yeah. Right. So instead of allow for one month, it's had continued to allow. So basically, oh. my point is they hadn't synced up 15.0 and 15.1. Oh, OK. OK. Well, that's good. It's right. Because that leads me to believe that they're still thinking about it. Right. You know, like it's not it's not fixed. They haven't given up. But continue to allow yeah, right. is better than continue for a month. Continue to allow is what it was before. The allow for one month came after when it continued oh. to allow was when it was happening weekly. Yeah. So <laughs> it's it's not better actually so much as it's just indication. It's just indication they have not like fixed this in that source source code that's being okay. built into fifteen point one yet. Okay, so, I got all excited thinking know, fingers crossed. Continue to allow meant continue <laughs> to allow, not continue to allow until you decide <laughs> to bother me again. No, I, I don't think so. <laughs> it's, okay. to, it's continued to allow for some random period of time, which we're not going to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Well, all right. We ate our vegetables. <laughs> now we're going to enter into a super scientific, data-driven, um, <laughs> predictable modeling to talk about iPhone batteries, right? And and how to preserve your, your uh, battery percentage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this this is definitely one of those ones where the word anecdata was just designed for. <laughs> well, I hear that if this is we're talking getting into some people say, I mean. <laughs> oh yeah, 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 pretty pretty close, yeah. So uh, you were wrote an article in Tidbits on September 25th about an article that Julie Clover of Mac Rumors wrote about the effect on changing to the limiting your battery to only charge to eighty percent. Yeah, this was a funny – I actually didn't know about this feature. It's new in the iPhone 15 line last year. And basically what Apple did is they added a feature where you can just say never charge the battery over 80%. Okay. So what we've we've been used to before this is optimized battery charging, which – it you know it, like if it uses machine learning to figure out your schedule it's like oh he always plugs it in at night when he's sleeping so you know i'll charge it to 80 percent, then i'll stop charging and hold it until you know 7 15 a.m when i can finish off that last 20 percent in you know before he gets up yeah so it's 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 only really going to 100 percent at the last minute right right and and that's to keep it from staying staying hot and and you know really irritating right. it all night long for no reason Right. Lithium batteries don't like being held at 100% on power. They don't like being you know, fully discharged either, which is another issue. But um, so, so, yeah, so this, so, so this is a slightly funny feature. I, you know, I almost wonder if they added it because, like, it, well, here you have a Tesla. Don't Teslas do this? You know, yeah. Like you can say don't charge over 80%? Yeah. And on every charge, you can look at it and see whether the um, – uh, set the charge limit. So in general, you don't want to go above 80%, but you're going on a trip. You just slide it up to 100 and then you charge to go. And uh, yeah. in in our discussion, we'll probably talk about that a little bit more too. So, <laughs> yeah. w- what I liked about Julie's article was she was nearly as tongue in cheek as you and I are being right now. It, she didn't pretend by <laughs> any means that she had scientific data. But explain what the experiment that she did that got everybody all excited. So, so she got an iPhone 15 Pro Max on day one, as, as one does when you're in this world. Um, and she knew about this feature, so she turned it on on day one and did not turn it off for a year. Talk about taking one for the team. Yeah. <laughs> wow. And and she actually said she said this was not, you know, it wasn't it wasn't a huge problem, but it there were definite times when it was bad and she did not ever go over 100%, 80%. Like she left it there the entire time, even when it was going to be annoying and she had to charge more during the day and things like that. So, and then she reported her numbers, um, basically that after an exa- exactly a year, she was at 94% battery health um, after two, with 299 cycles. Now, a cycle is an important thing to, 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 to keep in mind because that seems to be one of the really key variables. In all yeah, this is a two axis problem. Maybe yeah, three axes. Yeah. So, 
<laughs> so, so basically, what she's saying is, okay, you know, by by you know, by limiting my charging to eighty percent and using the phone normally otherwise, so I had to you know two hundred ninety nine cycles. Um, um, it, it fell to ninety four percent after a year. And she checked with a couple of other people at Mac Rumors who had the same model. Um, one of them was at eighty seven percent for three hundred and twenty nine cycles. Another one at ninety percent for two hundred and seventy one cycles. Um, they were so not we using three, the eighty percent check. We have three data points: two in the three do whatever you want data column points. and one in the eighty percent. Good, good. <laughs> wait, wait, can we? Can't you triangulate with three data points? <laughs> Absolutely, you can get a fact. You can get a number. <laughs> <laughs> so so when I first wrote about this, this was right after her article came out and a couple of other people had like, you know, posted on social media and whatnot and written in little things. So um, I pulled out some numbers um, from other people and looked at mine. And basically it wasn't clear this made much of a difference. Um, you know, people like John Gruber had 89% battery life with 144 cycles. Glenn Fleischman was at 91% with 411 cycles. I was at 92% with 346. And Nick here was at 95% with 273. Like, it, it was all over the map, frankly. Yeah, so you can't really come up with any answer from that, right? No, no yeah, conclusions yeah. can and be really all- arrived no, no conclusions. I mean, because I'm, I mean, look at Nick here's, I mean, I mean, he's using, well, he's using a 15 pro, not a pro max, I think, but he was at 95% with 273 cycles. So he used fewer cycle, just slightly fewer cycles, but pretty close to what Julie Clover did and was, was actually a percent better. So, you know, without, without worrying about it. And plus, oh wait, we're at more multivariables. You don't know how people charged. So oh, right, I charge right. almost entirely via MagSafe now. Mm-hmm. Which you know is supposed to be not as not as good, and yet I was at ninety two percent with way more cycles than she had. So you know it wasn't clear this was a this was a, this was a big thing, um, and uh, so yeah, so so I mean I kind of threw up my hands initially and said you know like I don't think there's anything here that that justifies the annoyance of running out of battery more frequently because you're you're not using your last twenty percent. Yeah, well, what I like about her article, though, is she didn't pretend that this was a scientific study. Yes. It was just more like a, I did this and here are yeah. some numbers. What what can I do with that? Um, but uh, you sent me another article. Um, uh, who was the other article yeah. with, where they took more, they added more Nick, data to the anecdata? data? Yeah, Nick here of Pixel Envy. Um, so he did that. He basically just scoured all the comments and on um, any any article that he could find where people had reported their information, and he built a number spreadsheet. I forget how many. What did he get? Like a hundred um, numbers or something like yeah, that. Something like that. Uh, yeah, numbers isn't so, telling me for some reason. Let's see how did I get a click in the cell. Let's see how many was it. Uh, one hundred twenty one or one hundred fifty. One hundred twenty one. So so. So now we're up to <laughs> anic data, you know, even more anic data. Um, but even in this case, you know, we really have no idea other than battery percent and cycles and whether or not they use the charge limiter of what the deal is. We just don't right. know like how they charged, what other conditions. Because I mean, the other things that may play a role in battery lifespan are, well, one, they're analog systems, right? They're chemicals. So they may not be identical. They, you know, there's just no, there's no telling if they're the same. Um, and, you know, a little bit that charging method really may play a role in temperature in general. You know, that, uh, right, you know, right. if you leave your phone in a hot car a lot, it's going to do bad things to it. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, you have but no idea what people do. Let's get back to Nick's uh, anecdata. So I took his anecdata and yeah. it's a well-known uh, fact of science that if you do a pivot table on it, then it's it's data. It's no longer anecdata, <laughs> anecdotal data, right? It's actual that's data. That's how you turn it that's that's yeah. how you turn it into data. Yeah, I'm I'm an engineer, right? I I know these things. So I ran a pivot table on his data because it, it was just a list of battery capacity, battery cycles, and whether or not they had the limit enable enable the limiter enabled. And um what I found was that the, uh, let's see, limiting the battery increased the average capacity by 3%. So on average, the battery limiter people got 98% and the non-battery limiter people got 95%. So you got a gain of 3% on average. However, if you look at the number of battery cycles that people had in those two categories, the uh, 
the battery limiters, let's see, oh shoot. Uh, sorry, the people who didn't limit their battery had 21% more cycles. So they were exercising their battery 21% right. more or, or an increase of 21%, yeah. but they, but they got, and they, but they only lost 3% in the battery. So therefore right. you right, should right. never limit your battery. Can you try again? No, Siri, I didn't <laughs> want to talk to you. <laughs> so see, it is science. Yeah. Well, it was interesting to me that the people who were the most interested in limiting their battery used their phones the least. Maybe they used their phones the least because they never had enough battery. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, because they, they weren't even getting charge cycles. So a charge cycle, because we should explain this, a charge cycle is the equivalent of using 100% of a battery. So if you, you know, one day you use, you, you barely, you barely, you barely use your phone, you, you know, you only get down to 70% and the next day you get down to, you know, you charge it back up and then you get down to 50%, that's 30 from the first day and 50 from the second day. And then, you know, sometime the next day you'll go over that 20% to remaining. That's one cycle. So it doesn't matter right. how many times you plug it in. It's the zero to 100 that counts as one cycle. And so um, you know, it's, most people seem to have somewhere in the 200 to 400 range of cycles, which means they're basically plugging, you know, using a phone, using the phone up about once a day, you know, give or take. So, no, my, my point is like, let's say you're going to a conference, you know, you're going to be doing right. all kinds of really fun stuff and you're, you're going to lose the battery before the end of the day because you're going to be talking to everybody. So you go in and you do things to change how much battery you use. I mean, you start you start doing things yes. like, okay, I'm going to make sure I turn off cellular because I know I'm going to be inside this building where I don't have a good cell signal and I'm going to go on to Wi-Fi and I'm going to use, you know, you can do all, you change your behavior based on the yep. fact that you know you're not going to have enough battery. So it's possible that it's <laughs> not true, it's true. not a driver. It's actually the result of using 80%. Like yeah. Those people are like miserly with their battery because they know they only have 80%. <laughs> well, and there was one guy who posted in Tibbet's talk. He had something like 70, 79, 97 cycles, something like that. It was, I, was, I was like, you've got to be kidding. This has to be wrong. How could you possibly have only charged your phone, you know, like every third day in essence? Yeah. And what he said was that he... Um, he, what he gets up in the morning, he leaves for work. He takes his phone with him. Um, he mm -hmm. unplugs his phone, takes it to work. As soon as he gets home from work, he plugs it back in again. So it is only off the charger for eight hours a day. Oh, and so, so wait a minute. So that wouldn't count as part of your charge cycles if you were using it while it was charging. Nope. It, I don't think it was so. Staying still. It's, I, I mean, well, and he's not using it. Right. I mean, if it's oh. charging, you're basically not using it. Right. Well, no, you the can point use being it while that he only uses it. the. You can have it on MagSafe you adapter. Can, but most people don't. But most people, mm -hmm. my, my guess is most people aren't. I mean, like, it's just annoying to have a cable attached or like if it's a MagSafe adapter. I mean, yes, you could have a, a battery attached or whatnot. But my guess is most people, when they're using their phone, it's just sitting, sitting loose. Uh, they need and, to goof you know, around more. What are they doing? Concentrating on work or something? I mean, that's <laughs> weird. <laughs> well, no. He's only goofing around at work. It's at home. He's not goofing around. <laughs> oh, it's on the charger at home. Yeah, only at oh, home. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. This so, I mean, is... this, this kind of makes sense like in the old days. Like if you had the old cell phones that did nothing but be a phone, mm -hmm. right? Okay. That's how you would use it. Like you'd, 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 you'd go to work. You'd, you'd take your cell phone off the charger with your keys and your wallet. You'd leave the house. You know, you'd have it in your pocket all day long because you might get a call while you're out. And you come home, you'd pop it back on the charger because you've got, an, you've got a landline there. You've got a landline sitting on the wall. Why would you need the cell phone thing? Exactly, exactly. You know what? I, I need to check. My, my mother-in-law uses an iPhone, but it is really more for like emergency kind of thing. She carries it with her when she leaves the house, but she really really notices that it's doing anything when she's at home and it sits on a charger. I should check and see her cycles as a function of time. She's had it for a while, but my father-in-law has a flip phone and he keeps it turned off in the glove compartment of the car. So that's handy. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Hopefully he remembers how to turn it on if he ever needs it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I had some fun looking at, um, let me find my notes on this. I, I sent you a link to a, a wonderful site called Battery University, 
It is such a wonderful, oh, nerdy, yeah. fabulous site. I, I <laughs> used it for, for a lot of information, but it was, um, they talked about cell phone batteries versus electric vehicle batteries and the, the difference between the two and even when they have the same battery mm. chemistry and things like energy density of gasoline versus, uh, versus uh, a battery. And my, my favorite thing in there was there's a table that tells you the energy by mass of different kinds of fuel. So it turns out hydrogen has the highest energy by mass at uh, 39,000 uh, watt hours per kilogram. As you go down, so 39,000 gasoline is between 12 and 13,000. Body fat it is, is at 10.5 thousand. <laughs> so after body fat is black coal, wood, and then lithium ion batteries at 100 to 250. So body fat is like 14 times the energy density of, of lithium ion batteries. <laughs> You just you just gotta you just gotta get your body into ketosis, you know. Just burn that fat. <laughs> just power your it's, iPhone. It's made of people. Um, anyway, I got I got a big <laughs> kick out of that. And, and one of the other things, this has nothing to do with Apple stuff, but I thought it was really interesting. Was they talked about <laughs> because of this energy density problem, there's a limit to how big of a battery you can make before you actually don't gain range in the car because it's just getting so heavy that you're not gaining any range. And that, that limit is at 350 miles. So you ju that's oh. why you don't see 400, 500, 600 mile cars that you've just run into a limit until we get a hold of these solid state uh, batteries that uh, Toyota is trying to make. I, I think we may have a limit that you're just not going to see battery cars going farther. Interesting. I'd always assumed that it was partly related to just like, you know, that was a that was a distance that, you know, most people no one few people would want to drive more than that in one session. So that that was kind of they picked that. But that, but it makes more sense that, you know, like, oh, yeah, it's just not worth it, you know, putting in a bigger, bigger battery. Yeah. Uh, at some yeah. point. I mean, the and the, I mean, what about like the like the big trucks, like the Ford, the F-150 Lightning? I think that might have a significant range because yeah, they put in a honking number. The battery is twice the size of mine. Uh, in my Tesla Model 3, oh. and it's the same range. It takes uh, twice as okay. long to so charge it's just... because it's twice as big because it's in this <laughs> massive vehicle. And so, <laughs> yeah, it, it, there, there's a limit, apparently. I mean, I don't know the exact numbers, but roughly 300. Um, but the other thing that's more relevant to the conversation we've been having is they have a graph. Now, these, this article was from 2018, so some of this might not be true. But the um, there's a graph on battery capacity retention as a, as a function of number of cycles, and then the different lines on the graph are what was the charge pattern. So, for example, the worst mm. is if you charge an EV to 100% and then down to 25%, you lose the most number of, of um, the most percentage of battery uh, with the number of cycles. That's the worst thing you can do. The best thing you can do is 75 to 65 so only charge the 75 and then at 65, plug, the, plug it back in. So you might get back to that guy that's just got his phone plugged in all day, right? Um, but you the, drive to the store, you drive home. <laughs> plug it back in. The kind of a sweet spot looks like 75 to 25%. So charging up to 75 and down to 25 is, is pretty good. 75 to 45 is even better. And, and looking at these graphs, I, I usually let it go down to like maybe 15% and plug it back in. But I, I charge at home. I could charge every couple of days and keep my battery in better shape, it sounds like. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Interesting. Well, I mean, one of the things that, that it was also a little telling about this this whole investigation is, of course, the people who are who are talking about this the most are people who get new phones every year. <laughs> you know, so. And the people who care are the people who don't get new phones every year. Right, right. The, I mean, the, the, you know, it sounded as though if your goal is to prolong the longevity of your phone as much as possible, that this setting might be worth it. But you also want to like not use your phone as much as possible because like that using it uses it up quite literally. So it's, it's the analog of, uh, of the, 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 the grandma in the 1950s who had plastic on her couch cushions so the seat would stay nice that you never got to sit on her seat. Precisely. It is exactly that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you you can you can have a nice iPhone, but you're not allowed to use it if you want it to last forever. <laughs> That's also like you keep it in the box. On, it's 
It's really good. If you put on a screen protector and then uh, and and it gets shattered, but you leave it that way, you know, it's really nice <laughs> under that screen screen protector, right? <laughs> but I think the, the the sweet spot in between is that I, I forget what the settings called, but the one that lets you uh, optimize battery charging. Because yeah, I have seen that if charging. I get up at four in the morning, it's not charged. But by the time I get yeah. up at six thirty, it is charged. Uh, important to shut off yeah. when you're when you're going to be getting up at the crack of dawn, like I am going to tomorrow. So uh, I need to turn that off. I think. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh. Yeah, no, it is definitely one of those situations where it's it's usually a very good feature, but every now and then it can bite you. I I actually run into it more with my with my MacBook Air, where there's times when I'm like it's again holding at eighty percent. I'm like, no, no, I really need this to charge the rest of the way for you know for something I'm doing tomorrow. Um, so before I leave. Yeah, it is good to know those settings are in there and you can and you can fiddle with them. But I think this whole conversation was just fun, right? Because we all it, this is sort of <laughs> like um, I, I always complain about sleep metrics because I think sleep tracking is stupid uh, because sleep tracking is just like weighing yourself every day. It doesn't have anything to do with whether or not you weigh more or less measuring calories. <laughs> or burned or, or consumed, that does change it. But uh, but anyway, but it's like people love the quantified self, right? We love to know, oh, you know, all these numbers about yeah. me or they're fascinating. Therefore, Allison's wrong. Sleep tracking isn't stupid because look at all this data I have about, and it's about me. And I think this is, falls into the same category, right? As you're looking at batteries and you want to go, oh, well, look at my percentage. Look at my, my cycles. What does that mean? You know? <laughs> Yeah, the I mean the main thing that that I I get sometimes gets sucked into the battery life on. Um, I've been dealing with and actually it did not get significantly better uh, with the iPhone 16 Pro that I've now got. Um, but when I go to look at my battery, um, the one of the top two one or two items every day is no cell coverage. Oh, and I had thought that I had weak. I had thought that my i15 iPhone 15 Pro had weak antennas, but it's possible that there's something going on with uh, the T-Mobile reception here that, I mean, I don't know why it's these phones because my wife's iPhone SE, third generation SE, does not have this problem. Where do you so see that? So there's something about them. Where do you find that? Because um, that's not in battery, battery, battery yeah, usage, battery. is it? You scroll down. Yeah, hmm. settings battery, um, just battery usage. Okay. So I'm using battery by... You probably by- you probably Show live in the first world where there is cell coverage. <laughs> no, we actually have terrible AT&T coverage at our house. And that's what I have. I mean, it's really, really bad. Yeah. Oh, but I use uh, Wi-Fi calling and all, whatever that is that, you know, let's, so I still I have get Wi-Fi calling calls. on too. So I have better Wi-Fi usage too, by app it's, or it's show activity? Of my, by app. I mean, it'll show up in both, but um, when you say show activity, it does not tell you the number of minutes. So I don't ever see that background act. Find my, hmm. So you see that as though it's an app, this this uh, metric yeah. of uh, low yeah. cell? Yep. Yeah. Huh. And, uh, and as I said, it's like today, today it's 12% of my battery life has gone to uh, no cell coverage. Wow. That's really interesting. I have never seen that in there. And I would have thought I would have. Huh. In the last 10 days, it's, yeah, it's 10% of my battery life over the last 10 days. Wow. So it's really, it's kind of shocking, frankly. Um, I'm, I am not wildly happy about this. Um, and, but I do, you know, like I don't, I, I need to, I need to like call T-Mobile. I'm, we're actually vaguely, vaguely contemplating switching, switching carriers for other reasons. So, you know, it's, there may be some other variables in play here, but it just seems like, you know, no cell coverage because I do have Wi-Fi calling on, right? It shouldn't be looking for cell coverage at all during the day. It's it's in Wi-Fi range, right? <laughs> right, right. Why would it ever? It, it yeah, it definitely shouldn't. You you can I bet you could write a shortcut that that says based on your home location, turn off cellular. Oh, but then you wouldn't get phone calls, would you? Huh. Would you? Oh, you I can turn know. off cellular data How? separately, can't you? Well, hmm. I'm band aiding the problem, question not because, solving like, it. <laughs> Yeah, right. <laughs> well, right. And I don't quite like I don't have it's not like I have. Yeah, I don't know how the, I don't know how quite how the Wi Fi calling works in the sense of like, if you have cellular turned off, will it still so you can turn off cellular anything? data without turning off cellular? Yeah, right. But will that? But that 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 might not make the difference because it would still be looking for the basically the radio yeah, is saying, still looking where's, for the the radio. where's the tower? Where's the tower? Where's the tower? 
Right. Yeah. But why is it looking for the tower? <laughs> I think overall, I would like a lot more information about what's sucking battery. I'd like it a lot more on the Mac because I constantly struggle with batteries that die when the machine is asleep. So I would really like yeah. better ways to diagnose that and say, what is using this? So you want sleep tracking for your batteries? What you're yes. <laughs> <laughs> Right, right, right. Um, but I don't. But but I don't want. What, yeah, no, that's exactly right. Because what I have right now <laughs> is I only have sleep tracking. It died overnight. The battery died because it was asleep. I don't have the why, and it's the why that I do want. So I do have. That's a perfect example. I have sleep tracking, and it's stupid. I don't have the input to why is it dying. That's it. Adam. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, and you remember you 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 probably you probably do remember this that long ago I mean this is like eighties level um, late eighties um, when you printed to a laser printer the printer driver would come up and it would say looking for laser writer mm, and, yeah. and and the laser was almost always just sitting right there and you're like it's right there <laughs> can't you see it possibly even That's plug how I feel into with this whole it. radio thing you're like the cell tower it's right there <laughs> see. See, actually, they should give us some silly, it, like, big, have you played with the SOS uh, feature uh, where, oh. where you have to find the satellite? Of, they should I give can, it to I, you I, for I cellular. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're pretty close, right? <laughs> yes. Your best tower is in this direction. <laughs> it's um, right there. <laughs> we, we, uh, I do have played, like, on a bike ride um, fairly shortly after uh, uh, the beta of iOS 18 came out. I actually did go into one of the areas where I know there's no coverage whatsoever. And, yeah, it popped right up. It was super cool. I still got to write an article about that. Okay, so uh, messages that via case, satellite. Yeah, the SMS or messages via satellite. Yeah. Oh, I have not gotten to play with that. I yeah. haven't been out of satellite area. Maybe I can do it when I'm in a plane. <laughs> that would be interesting. <laughs> mm. That might be hard, but yeah, I, I, I don't know. I'm betting no, because they well, I'm closer to the they, satellites. Well, you, <laughs> yeah, right. But the but you also can see all sorts of towers. Well, because you have to like it has to not be able to see cell towers. You can't. I don't think you can. You can force it to like turn off. You can't go into airplane mode and then get it to turn on. I don't think. Yeah, I wonder. I need to do some experiments. I'm on a plane tomorrow. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I'm, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> when they t turn off your phone, they mean turn off. <laughs> I mean, phones work with satellite internet, so they must, or uh, if airplanes work with satellite internet, so they must be able to use it. I think so. But, uh, I think so. I mean, the, I mean, the real, I mean, my understanding is the reason why, the big reason why they have you turn off um, your phone on airplanes um, is actually that you're lighting up multiple towers. You actually confuse the cell network more than anything else because you're the same distance from every tower on the ground near in a nearby radius, right? The, yeah. the distance is very, it's very small. But if so, I'm flying um, over like Oklahoma, I'm probably not going to be lighting up so many towers. I don't know. Yeah, probably not in Oklahoma. Um, but uh, but anyway, that's the that's apparently the big reason that you know for the most part the airplanes really can can handle a little bit of little bit of extra uh, uh, radio activity near them. They're not going to yeah. their their systems don't just go go kablooey because someone turned their cell phone on. Right. Right. <laughs> Well, I thought this was fun, Adam. I know we uh, we walked into it knowing it was going to be silly, and uh, and I don't know. I just always enjoy talking to you, so this was fun. As usual, people can yeah. find your writings at tidbits.com. Indeed, indeed. We've got some articles about both the stupid screen recording dialogues, which people should keep submitting feedback to Apple about how they're stupid. <laughs> um, and, uh, and also on this battery thing, which again, you know, it's neat that Apple added another feature, I guess, but I'm just thinking unless, unless, you know, eking the last little, every little bit out of your iPhone lifespan is important to you. Just go with optimized battery charging. There you go. We have the final answer, the definitive answer from all this scientific <laughs> evidence and calculations we've had going. Thanks for joining us again, Adam. Uh, thanks for having me. Talk to you again soon. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Chit Chat Across the Pond Light. Did you notice there weren't any ads in the show? That's because this show is not ad supported. It's supported by you. If you learned something, or maybe you were just entertained, consider contributing to the Podfeet podcast. You can do that by going over to podfeet.com and look for the big red button that says support the show. When you click that button, you're going to find different ways to contribute. 
If you'd like to do a one-time donation, you can click the PayPal button. If you want to make a recurring contribution, click the weekly Patreon button. You're only charged when I publish an episode of the NoSillaCast, which, let's face it, it's every single week, so I don't charge Patreon for Chit Chat Across the Pond Light or Programming by Stealth episodes. Another way to contribute is to record a listener contribution. It's a great way to help the NoSillaCast ways learn from you and takes a little bit of the load off of me doing all the work. If you want to contact me for any reason, you can email me at allison at podfeed.com and I really encourage you to follow me on Mastodon at podfeed at chaos.social. Maybe you want to talk to the other Nocilla castaways. You can do that in our Slack group at podfeed.com slash Slack. Thanks for listening and stay subscribed.